Hey, what's going on YouTube? In today's video, we're going to take a look at N8N, an automation platform, a low code solution. I started using this platform because I wanted to automate some of my workflows and I saw how cool it looked and the different examples that were provided I thought I could use in my environment. Uh, so this is something that I've been checking out. So in today's video, we're going to go over my first automation. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to kind of walk you through it and then uh, show you what it's about. So as you can see here, this is the first automation using N8N. I'm using the self-hosted version, which is free. You could use it on your own computer. And I'm just using it on my personal computer, nothing crazy. Uh, so with that being said, what this is going to do is it's going to perform an HTTP request to Airtable to pretty much pull in data from a table. And in this case, it's going to be websites. And then it's going to split it out into different items and then it's going to perform another http request in order to check if this site is online if it's getting an error code we will get a false response and that will show up under here uh, so as you can see here these are two examples of the websites that are in that table i am not a real website i'm not a real website too uh, and then all the passing websites we're just throwing into a non-op uh, pretty much do nothing uh, if we want to do something later on we can do that and here's the data for that we could get in some json all right, so now that we kind of have a basic understanding of what this automation is going to do, let's go ahead and start with the first step of getting our Airtable set up. So go head over to Airtable.com, set up an account, and then you're going to go ahead and go to the home page, and you're going to go start from scratch. This is going to give us a blank table. Uh, essentially, we can just X out of this, and then we're going to just right-click on these, and we're going to write uh, delete field. And then in the very first column, you're going to right click that and we're going to look for edit field and we're going to change this to websites. And we're going to hit save. So now we have a table with three rows in the column websites. Let's go in here. Let's put some actual websites. We'll do, do google.com, cyberme.tech. Check it out. It's our blog. And then we'll just do a fake website as I've shown in the example. So th these are going to be our three websites. For the next step, you're going to want to go ahead and create a personal access token. The API key has been since deprecated as of, I think, June of 2023, maybe. I think it actually says it right here. Uh, sorry, a little bit off. Be beginning of the year. Uh, with that being said, you can go ahead and create a personal access token. Um, so this is all temporary just for testing. So you're going to go to airtable.com slash create slash tokens once you're logged in. And then once you're over there, make sure on the left side, you're going to click on personal access tokens. And then on the right side, click create new token. And in here, you're going to name it whatever you want. So we'll just do CyberMe YouTube. Uh, we'll do example. So I can delete it later along with the others. So the scope is going to be pretty much the... Um, what you want this account to be able to do. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and read. Maybe in the future, we're going to set it up where it could create, edit, and delete records. And then down here at the access, you're going to make sure that we assign that new table. So which is going to be this one. But let's go ahead and rename that first. That's not what we wanted. So let's just create token. Here's going to be the... Eh, we'll just leave it at that default name. Here's going to be the... Um, personal access token obviously this will be deleted by the time you get used to this so I don't care that it's being seen it's just an example so copy that and let's go ahead and paste that in our notepad or save it somewhere because you're only gonna be able to see this once otherwise you got to regenerate it later on there's a few ways to go about this one way that I found that was pretty interesting is if you go to airtable.com slash developer slash web slash API slash introduction and you could go ahead and actually click on the so to view API documentation that's generated for a particular base. And in this case, we'll just use the default one we just had created. It'll actually give you the examples that you want or that you will need in order to perform uh, certain functions. And in this case, all I want to do is go ahead and grab the authentication example. And it's a curl request. So if we grab this, um, we're going to need this for once we're setting up our N8N. We can go ahead and import this curl request and it will just automatically do what we need in order to perform that request. So let's go ahead and save that on the side and let's head back over to N8N. Within N8N, if you're not on the workflow screen, go over on the left side, workflows tab, go to add workflow. 
And then here we're going to add our first step. So in this case, we don't necessarily need to do this. Um, but since I'm going to be doing it on a schedule, that's kind of what I did. And you can go ahead and play around with these settings. Pretty straightforward. You can do it in a certain amount of days and a certain amount of hours or minutes. Um, and that's really it. And this will give you the execution information. Let's go back to the canvas. All right. So the, the next one is going to be the HTTP request. So let's go in here. We're going to hit that plus sign. What happens next? And we're just going to search HTTP. And we're going to open that up. So as I was saying, if you go over to uh, up here, import, import curl, we can go ahead and we could actually just import what I was just talking about. And if we import it, it'll give us, uh, so I just ran into a little bit of a problem. It wasn't that big of a deal. I just noticed that I copied the entire line. Make sure you copy from curl to the second double quote down here and not the dollar sign. Also, I changed the um, table name because it had a space and then a one. So we got rid of the table name. So if you go back into your table, and you go ahead up here at the top, you could right click it and then rename table and just get rid of that space in one if you want. Otherwise, it has like a HTML encoding essentially or URL encoding in there. So once we go ahead, we copy that, go back to the workflow. And then, it, like I said, if we import it, so let's go here just to show you. Go to import, copy, import curl, paste that in. So now we have um, the URL here. And then we down have here at the bottom, we have specify headers, use fields below, header parameters, authorization is the name of it. And then the secret token here, make sure you go ahead and copy the token that you had saved earlier and paste that in there. I'll do that now. And now once we do test prep, we should be able to get the three records that are on that table. Um, but it is showing up as one item. So that's important to take note of. The reason why I say that is important because the, so if we were to perform another HTTP request, it is not going to go ahead and break it out into each uh, individual website. It's going to go ahead and perform it once. So the other node that we're going to need, as I explained in the beginning of this video, is going to be split out. And that's going to turn a list into items, into separate items. And then, so if we just go ahead and, sorry, we're going to go back. And we got to put in, so we'll put in records, which is pretty cool. We'll just go ahead and drag this over there. And now you can see now we have three different items containing the various websites that we have within our table. The reason why I say that is important because the, so if we were to perform another HTTP request, it is not going to go ahead and break it out into each uh, individual website. It's going to go ahead and perform it once. So the other node that we're going to need, as I explained in the beginning of this video, is going to be split out. And that's going to turn a list into items, into separate items. And then, so if we just go ahead and, sorry, we're going to go back. And we've got to put in, so we'll put in records, which is pretty cool. We'll just go ahead and drag this over there. And now you can see now we have three different items containing the various websites that we have within our table. So at this point, all we need is another HTTP request node. So go ahead, hit that plus sign. HTTP request. Uh, and then as you can see here, we have uh, pretty much what we saw earlier. Now all we want to do is in the URL, we're going to go ahead and grab the, um, so if we're on the schema, go ahead and grab websites. Let's place that right in there. All right, so now that we have that fields, websites in the URL, if we were to go ahead and execute this right now, we should get an error because it is going to pass through a website that is not real. So if we go into the settings here at the top, go ahead and on error, we're going to go ahead and hit continue. And now if we test prep, as you can see, we have three different items, show data anyway, and then we're going to have our response in here, which is exactly what we want. And there's the not real website. And then the other two websites are in there as well. All right, so for the next step, we're going to go ahead and need an if block. This will pretty much perform some logic. So if we have a certain condition, it will perform one thing. And if we have another condition, it will do another thing. Uh, so in this case, go ahead again, press that uh, plus button. And we're going to look for flow. And then there's an if switch or an if uh, node in here. Go ahead and open that up. So at this point, 
what we're going to do is we're going to perform a val or we're going to get a value and we're going to compare it to another value and if it doesn't if it is false it would do one thing and if it's true it would do another um, but in this case the value that i need is not here and i forgot so let's go back the value that i'm looking for is a status code of 200 so let's go back and go to our previous http request and in here we're going to go down to add option and we're going to get response and then include response headers and never error so now if we test prep um do test prep should that anyway and now in here if we scroll down we should have the status code so let's go ahead and grab that status code place that into value one that'll automatically switch over to expression uh, this is going to be a number and we're going to say is equal to and this will be 200 so now you can see at the top we have a true branch two items and a false branch of one item and in this case not a real website does not receive the status code of 200 um, because it is not getting a valid response at this point we could be done um, but just to kind of clean it, clean it up for that false branch well for the true branch we'll just do no operation so it's just kind of like a placeholder for now and then for false branch what we're going to want to do here is we're going to do a set or it's edit fields and then in here we're just going to do a manual mapping and then um, if we go over here all we want to grab um, this is the way i had it at least is we'll go to yeah we could just do the message um so now we'll just get a nice clean response as to instead of all this other stuff we'll just get a clean response uh, for a website that was unable to get um, a 200 response uh, so in that case we could also from this point we could even send this message through like a slack integration or an email integration um, at this point this is going to be pretty much completed out just to kind of show you how quick also you can update it so let's go into our air table go back to our base and let's just make another one real quick and let's do bing.com no let's do just to show you the um false branch again so then if we go back into our workflow test our workflow we should now have two items and as you can see here a fake website and not a real website and that's pretty much going to close out today's video i hope you were able to take something away i think automation is a big deal uh, going forward, I'm going to continue using N8M actually quite frequently, especially even with this one, this example here. I plan to take it a step further and in, in, um, introducing um, some microcomputers and stuff like that in order to maybe perform an API or a webhook in order to present me with a red light uh, notifying me that one of my websites have been down. Uh, so that's just something I'm looking into, but there's pretty much unlimited amount of things that you can do with this platform um, even with GPT I'm looking to use GPT more um, especially with automation and I want to integrate that with in um, N8N uh, so with that being said that's going to close out today's video I hope you're able to take something away as always never stop learning